watching Lotus News Network, Gensokyo's finest news source. I'm Delta Pi, filling in for Ayesha Meimaru, who has been attacked by a flock of seagulls. The results of the 18th annual Toho Popularity Poll, held in September 2022, has shocked the yokai world. With the steadily growing voter population, many changes are in the future of Gensokyo. Let's take a look at the headlines. Flandre Scarlet narrowly clinched the first place victory over Marissa Kirisame with just a 145 point lead. Everything lined up for the younger mistress this year. Beat Mario had released the song Internet Survivor featuring Flandre as Miss Toho Project herself, Toho 6, Embodiment of Scarlet Devil, had its 20th anniversary, and Flandre reappeared in the games as a relevant character for the first time in 20 years, becoming playable in Toho 17.5, Sunken Fossil World. All these factors combined gave her the largest raw point gain of 6,308 points. Marissa Kirisame has maintained her second place position from last year, no doubt benefiting from her protagonist appearance in Toho 18.5, Hundred Black Market. 899 points and one rank behind her is the other protagonist, Reimu Hakurai, losing out once again to the magician. And right behind her is the disgraced Yomu Kompaku. Despite being cleared of her voter fraud charges, the half-human, half-phantom gardener finally fell from her lofty position at first, as her protagonist appearance in Wily Beast and Weakest Creature fades away from memory. Bringing in the rest of the Scarlet Devil crew is Saikuya Izayoi, slipping ahead one rank. Increases in ranking were seen for almost all characters debuting in Toho 6. Rumia jumped 4 places to reach 17th, Hong Ling jumped 3 places to reach 25th, and Koakuma jumped 13 places to reach 54th. The only Toho 6 character to fall behind in the polls was Dayose, dropping 6 ranks to 66, potentially because she is not as heavily associated with the Scarlet Devil crew, but most probably because she is irrelevant. Romelia Scarlet maintained her position of 7th, but had a much greater increase in points than the 6th placer Koishi Komeji, though it was not enough to close the gap between the two characters. Related to the embodiment of Scarlet Devil representation is Cherno in 15th place. She has jumped 3 ranks up. Although the Toho 6th anniversary may be partly responsible for this, it is likely more accurate to attribute this to the continued growth and popularity of the Ice Fairy in the Western fandom because of memes. In 31st is the exact opposite situation. Here we have Soika Ibuki, everyone's favorite Japanese goblin, except evidently she is isn't everyone's favorite Japanese goblin because she did not move a single rank, having only gained 633 points. Despite the popularity of the famous We Are Japanese Goblin video in 2022, the fame seems to have had no benefit for the high vivid chartreuse green oni herself. The same cannot be said of her theme, Broken Moon, which Japanese goblin is an arrangement of. The song did gain 1,687 points, though it maintained its rank of 14. Speculation proposes that the mean spread was mostly amongst non-Toho fans, or those who were otherwise unaware of the popularity poll, or that it simply didn't translate into popularity for Suika herself within the fandom, though the reason for that is unclear. Right below, we had the beginnings of a Yakumo family conspiracy. Ran Yakumo rose 3 places to 34th. What's notable is that Ran Shikigami Chen also increased in ranking by 5 places. Although Yukari Yakumo herself remained in the same ranking, she did increase by a semi-similar number of points as Ran and Chen. Yukari's main theme, Necrofantasia, went up 3 places, though with a 1,567 point increase that outpaced the point increase of the characters. Yukari's other theme, Nightfall's Evening Star, gained 229 points. The pattern, however, did not extend to Ran's theme, a maiden's illusionary funeral, Necro Fantasy though, which only increased by 60 points and fell 8 ranks. While there's no clear explanation as to why the Yakumo group increased in popularity, the characters have been observed to be fairly interconnected. In 35th, we have Natori Kawashiro rising up a rank. She gained a hefty 715 points, easily connected to her appearance in Toho 18.5. Natori's first new Zunart in 15 years was a milestone in the Kappa fandom, one appropriately translated into increased popularity. Just below this, we see the impact of the long-awaited Sunken Fossil World. The gradual reveal of characters means that the popularity of a few of the characters have already been impacted by the game. And while these previously revealed characters did experience a few changes 
Avengers during the polls this year, these can likely no longer be deeply connected to the game's influence. On the other hand, the characters revealed upon the release of the game have been freshly impacted on the polls. Utsuho Oku Ryuji flew up 3 ranks to 36th with 798 points gained. The secret god Okina Matara also gained 301 points but was just beaten out by Hina Kagiyama, who knocked the stage of Gensokyo down a rank with a surprising 713 point increase. Chion Yorigami gained a few more points than her sister Jun, yet because of their positions, Jun jumped 12 places while Chion remained stuck at 30th. In 53rd, we had the debut of the chairwoman of the Goyoku Alliance, Yuma Totetsu. She has inserted herself as the highest of the Beast Gang leaders and it was quite close to beating Keiki. This is an impressive debut. Only Chimata, Keiki, and Yachi debuted higher than Yuma. Her gremlin-like design and comically large spork have served to propel her upwards in popularity, and she may potentially stay there. Sunken Fossil World has proven to be quite a boon for the new characters, but if the sliding of most of the previously revealed characters are any indication, the characters shouldn't be too comfortable in that increase. Popularity easily fades away. In 41st, we had the fall of Renko Usami down 3 ranks. Maribel Hearn is down at 60th, having fallen 6 ranks. This is despite the new Hifu Club CD, Rainbow Colored Septentrion, releasing December 2021. This isn't to say that the CD had no effect on the characters. Maribel and Renko both increased by similar numbers number of points, it just wasn't enough to keep them ahead of the other characters. Breaking news, a rat has broken into the facility. Nazrin has had a 14th rank jump to reach 49th. There is only one explanation. Nyan posting has led to the rat multiplying and swarming the internet, akin to her real life brethren. She's doing very well, and if you browse any meme pages, it's almost impossible to swiss her. Oh no 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 no, I can't stop making cheese puns. That must mean she's in the vicinity. What's that? She's breached the perimeter? Oh no 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 no! Oh, please don't kill me! Though our broadcasting facility was destroyed, the foul beast attack was repelled by the Haniwa forces of our savior, Keiki Haniya Sushin. May she reign forever. However, the unenlightened world remains ignorant as to where their fate should lie. Our goddess only gained 35 points and lost 5 ranks to undeserving vermin, falling into 51st place. As wily beast and weakest creature fades out of recency, her true believers are the only ones who remain. Though the other Toho 17 characters have similarly had their crowds thinned out to only the most loyal of followers. Yachi Kicho fell to 64th, while Saki Kurokoma fell to 93rd. The great commander Mayumi Jotogu fell to 94th. There was also this random cow who fell to 140th. The largest exception to this is that chicken goddess, Gutaka Niwatari, who has jumped 5 ranks to reach 63rd. Her theme, Seraphic Chicken, has likewise jumped from 215th to 154th, possibly due to its arrangement in Toho 17.5. Kutako's appearance in Toho 17.5 cannot be the sole cause of her rising popularity since such increases in popularity were not observed in the other previously revealed characters. It seems that she is obtaining a stable popularity to rival our goddess within the Toho 17 characters. While hard times have fallen on many of the residents of Hell, the fight continues. And now, the stock market. The unconnected market has experienced a large recession. Credited to the wearing off of the newness of Toho 18, many characters have experienced drops in the market. Chimada Tenkyu has dropped to 52nd, Megumu Izunamaru has dropped to 61st, though she was one of the few unconnected marketeers characters to gain points. This may be attributable to her Tengu underlings propping up her ranking. Misumaru Tamatsukuri has dropped to 123rd, Mike Gotokuji has dropped to 106th, and Takane Yamashiro has dropped to 122nd, although she only lost one point overall, having seemingly been kept somewhat afloat by her appearance in 100 Black Market. In 83rd is the biggest fall of any character in the popularity poll. Momoyo Himemushi fell 21 ranks from 62nd. Although the fall was extraordinarily brutal, it matches with the trend of the rest of the market. One character, however, has broken the trend of the general market. Tsukasa Kudamaki has fallen to 57th place, but she did gain 345 points, the highest number of points gained by any unconnected marketeer's character. Market analysis suspects that this is due to her being a fox girl. While the market crashes, Chimada and Tsukasa are looking to be the likeliest characters to maintain their positions against further losses. In 69th is Mistia Lorelei, who has jumped two ranks. Though Mistia has recently risen to fame through Mistia's Izakaya, released October 2021, right after the previous popularity poll, it doesn't seem to have impacted her that much. It is no Notable that her theme, Death to All But The Song, did gain a similar number of points as Mistia and thus jumped ranks accordingly. So there does seem to be some boost present. The steadily growing 
extreme popularity of the game could mean that the restaurant simulator's impact on Mistia's popularity are yet to be seen. In 76, Kosuzu Motori has fallen 7 ranks. Fellow Pripworks characters Hieda no Aku and Miyoi Okunoda have also fallen down the rankings. This may or may not indicate a slide in the popularity of the Pripworks or the characters debuting within them. In contrast to this, Yuka Ibusu has had a decently large jump to 134th. This is a good recovery for the Jellyfish after her position of last place Windows character in the 2021 popularity poll. She only gained 99 points, though at these low levels of the popularity poll, minor point fluctuations can mean a lot for rankings. While Yuka did appear in 100 Black Market, her appearance can be safely discounted under similar logic to ignoring the appearances of characters in the photography games. This may very well be attributable to the random ebb and flow of character popularity, so for now, Yuka's movement against the general Toho 17 trend doesn't say much. In 137th, we had the biggest jump of any character, a feat belonging to the one and only Louise. 159 points were all that were needed for this character to skyrocket 28 places in the rankings. The question remains of why Delta Pi is on the field and investigating. I'm here at the Torrance Cultural Arts Center, one of the best places to find Toho fans in the wild. Now, let's ask some random people. Hi, did you vote for Louise in the popularity poll? Uh, yeah. Alright, great, thank you. Alright, now let's see if we can find anyone else. Oh! Okay, I'm receiving a transmission from headquarters. Apparently, a man with a pig hat was responsible for the Louise campaign. Hmm. Now, where on earth would I find someone like that? Oh! <laughs> so, what is this Louise campaign? The Louise campaign was an effort started by me to rise Louise in the 2022 Toho character popularity poll as far as possible. So why campaign for Louise of all characters? So out of all of the Toho characters I really really like, Louise was by far the least popular of them. So by going for Louise, I was able to do two things. One, I was able to see how far I could take a character because I'm a Toho YouTuber so I was just a bit curious to see, hey, how far can this thing go? Then two, again, I really, really like Louise, and I think her and a lot of the other characters from Mystic Square are really underrated, so I kind of wanted to show the world who Louise was and then shed light on the complexities of Toho 5. So how do you feel about the results? I am very, very happy with what we were able to do. Out of all of the named characters, Louise rose like the most places, which I was extremely proud of. And my goal worked. A lot of people uh, learn more about Toho 5. I had a friend who came up to me after who was like, hey, I had no idea that Toho 5 had like a story about tourism. So I was able to shed light on a character I liked a lot and then raise appreciation for a game I liked. So are you planning to continue on campaigning for Louise? Uh. I'm planning on supporting her passively, but for the next poll, I have another character I have my eyes set on, and I fully believe that this is the most underrated character in the series. I'm pretty sure most fans don't even know who he is. Alright, thank you for your time. Back to you at the studio, Delta. Thank you, Delta. We return to our popularity poll at 138, where we had the debut of Mizuchi Miyadeguchi. This is quite low for a debut character, but fits in with the general observation of the print works being in a somewhat downward trend in popularity. Though she is the antagonist of Foul Detective Satori, it seems to not be enough to raise her in the polls. The lower popularity can be compared to the other debut character in this poll, Yuma. While Yuma has received much attention due to her comically large spork, it seems that there may be less mention of Mizuchi outside of print work circles. And an issue that likely led to her lower placement. In 141st, Kotohime has climbed up 12 ranks. This appears to be another campaign, this time for the Toho Game Dev Hub, inspired by Megapig 9001's Louise campaign. Specifically, this campaign can be traced to the landmark Game Jam fan game The Little Rabbit Princess and the House of Eternity, featuring Kotohime, created for the fourth Toho Pride Jam held in June 2022. The game tied for first and made waves in the Game Dev community, enough to spur a small voting campaign for her in the Toho Game gained a Discord server that helped Kotohime gain 82 points, which was enough at such low rankings to launch her upwards. Bringing up the end of her report on the character poll is Sanyo Komakusa. 
Though she only lost 9 points in comparison to last year, this was enough to drop the Gambling Den Operator down from 138th to 143rd, making her the second lowest Windows character, with only Unzen achieving lower popularity. Though tragic for her fans, Sanyo's fate was not entirely unexpected. Even in the demo, Sanyo was fairly left out of the initial popularity swirl of Toho 18, and once that began to fade, she only sank lower. Her being the only Toho 18 character to not appear in Toho 18.5 certainly didn't help either. A combination of non-appearance and bad luck has left Sanyo in the dust, concluding our coverage of the character section. Next up on Lotus News Network, music. You and Owen was her achieved first place as usual. While the song only gained 3,280 points last year, the 20th anniversary of Embodiment of Scarlet Devil, the arrangement of the song in Toho 17.5, and Internet Survivor all combined to give Flandre's theme a 6,672 point increase this year. Similarly to Flandre's point gain, this was the biggest point gain of any song in the polls. Right behind in second is, as usual, Septet for the Dead Princess. The gap between the first and second place songs has only increased throughout the years, and was shattered this year as Flandre's theme gained almost double the points that Romilia's theme gained. In third place, which is the honorary first place for music, we have Koishi's theme, Heartman's Yokai Girl, which shifted up a rank from last year with a 3004 point gain for unknown reasons. And trusting this world to Idol's idolatrized world, last year's honorary first place for music has fallen to 6th place. While the novelty is wearing off, this is still an extremely impressive performance for such a new song. The song also didn't lose points, its growth was only outpaced by that of other songs. While it's certainly not the most popular Toho song, idolatrized world could very well be here to stay. In 20th is Centennial Festival for Magical Girls, which gained 1,015 points from last year. This is obviously because of the 20th anniversary of Toho 6, the entire gain sound either maintained its ranking or had a rank increase. Apparition Stock the Night jumped to 28. Crimson Tower Eastern Dream gained a whole 1,823 points, enough to bring it from 68th to 29th. And a dream that is more scarlet than red left up to 53rd. The fandom's revisitation of the game this year has brought benefits to the soundtrack all around. Shimada's theme, Where Is That Bustling Marketplace Now in Memorial Marketeers, has lost 8 points and fell to 39th. This is despite an arrangement of it appearing in the CD Rainbow colored Setentrian. This fall matches up with the lower popularity that most of the Unconnected Marketeers cast has been experiencing, but it also indicates that Rainbow Colored Setentrian didn't make as much of an impact on popularity. The rest of the Unconnected Marketeers soundtrack has been experiencing a similar reduction in popularity, though their high changes in rank are simply due to low point differences in their position on the poll. In 79th is the debut song, Memento of All Organisms, Memory of Fossil Energy, Yuma's second theme. Though this is fairly low, there are certain certainly worse places for a song to be. The Sunken Fossil World soundtrack as a whole hasn't enjoyed much popularity, with most arranged songs receiving only a minor boost. The debut of Yuma's first theme, Memento of the Avaricious Beast, can be found further down at 136, with about half the points of her second theme. This is mirrored in the debut of Okina's themes. Her second theme, Secret God Madara, debuted at 24th, while her first theme, The Concealed Four Seasons, debuted at 32nd, with around three quarters of the points of her second theme. While there isn't much sample size, the second themes of characters appear to be more popular. The other original songs of Sungen Fossil World have been left behind in the ashes, a fate typical for many songs that aren't character themes. Illusionary White Traveler, the stage 4 theme of Hidden Star and Four Seasons, recently received attention in the form of an arrangement in Rainbow Colored Septentrion. This helped the song up 8 ranks to place 119th, though the 120 point increase pales in comparison to the other point increases seen in the polls. While Rainbow Colored Septentrion cannot be said to have had no effect, the difference between it and, say, Sunken Fossil World is staggering. In 141st is the biggest rank jump for music. The ground's color is yellow, gained 315 points, enough to catapult it 68 ranks upwards. Rank increases typically aren't very notable with the music section because the point differences are so small that minor changes in points can lead to a massive change in ranking. This seems to be the case here, and there's no clear reason for the 315 point increase so this case can be attributed to the natural ebb and flow of popularity. And 205th is the highest original song from 100 Black Market, titled, well, 
100th Black Market. This is the closest song to a final boss theme that this game has, and while those are usually the most popular songs of a game, this song has placed fairly low. The rest of Toho 18.5's songs are also quite low in the rankings. The 100th Black Market soundtrack seems to not have particularly stood out to the fandom, resulting in low popularity. In 295th, we have another debut song, this time from a CD. The Walls of Nanetsuishi Dash to Seize the Clouds from Rainbow Colored Septentrion debuts with a dismal 90 points. The song, composed to promote tourism to the Yamanashi Prefecture, was part of a CD that, from previous parts of the poll, didn't seem to have much impact, so the small number of points is understandable. The points it received are interestingly quite close to Illusionary White Traveler's point increase. Unfortunately, the only other song on the CD, Where's That Bustling Marketplace Now, Immemorial Marketeers, was contaminated with the falling popularity of Unconnected Marketeers, and cannot be used to judge Rainbow Colored Satentry. So, from our sample size of 2, we can conclude that the CD's popular influence was fairly minimal. Finally, in 403rd, just for fun, we had the biggest rank drop of 107 ranks lost. The unlucky song is Gensokyo Mystery Discovery, which was ironically the song with the biggest rank increase last year. Again, at this section of the music poll, the point differences are extremely small, and the song just lost 45 points, so the rank drop has little meaning. In that case, we'll move on to the next part of our report. Work. Our top 6 is the same as usual, Embodiment of Scarlet Devil, Imperishable Night, Perfect Cherry Blossom, Mountain of Faith, Subterranean Animism, and Legacy of Lunatic Kingdom. Unconnected Marketeers maintains its 10th place position from last year. The top 6 is standard, these rankings have been the same for quite a while. The only thing of note is that because of its 20th anniversary, Toho 6 had a 6,972 point jump, nearly 3 times as much of a point jump as the second most popular game, Toho 8. Toho 18, on the other hand, had the largest raw point job of any work, but this wasn't enough to lower it behind the 8th placer, Wily Beast and Weakest Creature. Once again, the recession of Unconnected Marketeers is observable, but it remains in a good position popularity-wise. In 19th is the printwork Wild and Horned Hermit. It gained 630 points, allowing it to leap up from 112. I cannot find a good reason as to why this is the case. A similarly puzzling situation is Lotus Land Stories' 748 point gain, allowing it to jump from 18th to 12th. The reasons behind this change is also unclear. Doho 18.5, Black Market, debuted at 21st, a decent debut when compared to the other spin-off games. Toho 17.5 debuted at 51st on account of its lengthy development time. Toho 16.5 debuted at 28th. Toho 15.5 was Antinomy of Common Flowers debuting at 10th, but the final Air Fighter game is an unfair comparison to 100 Black Market. While not extremely popular, 100 Black Market was evidently not irrelevant. As no characters other than the main characters benefited significantly from the game, a situation similar to to the photography games, it's easy to speculate that 100 Black Market's power mainly lies in its card mechanics rather than its cast. In 22nd is the biggest jump in the works category, with Sunken Fossil World leaping up 23 ranks to its current position. This is due to the game's full release in October 2021 after languishing in development and popularity hell for around two years. Despite the long time for hype buildup, the game didn't reach too high upwards upon release, notably placing right below 100 Black Market, Toho 18.5. Toho 17.5 and 18.5 both did not receive entirely positive reception, and despite the initial hype, the gains evidently did not lodge themselves into the fandom's mind for very long. Foul Detective Satori makes a grand return at 25th. The printwork had an increase of 9 ranks, the second highest jump in works. Serialization had stopped in February 2021 due to the artist stepping down due to health concerns, and in that year's popularity poll, the manga remained at the same level of popularity. The return of the printwork in October 2021 with the new artist naturally led to an increase in popularity. While still in the middle range of popularity for works, it has placed right next to the other active manga series, Lotus Eaters. While the active print works have not reached the popularity of Wild and Horned Hermit or Forbidden Scrollery, they have maintained their fans. In 40th, it's the largest fall in the works section with Curiosities of Lotus Asia, dropping 9 ranks. The series has not had a new chapter since March 2021 and has been on a slow downward spiral of popularity since then. While this is a large fall, it is just the continuation of previous trends. In this year's poll, 
the who's who of humans and yokai art books were split into separate options for the everlasting edition released october 2020 and the dusk edition released march 2020. these technical debuts are a low 55th and 56th respectively who's who of humans and yokai achieved a similarly low ranking when it was a unified category and the splitting has maintained this low ranking indicating that the art books are not popular as a whole even if their art is used decently often and finally in 50 cents we had the debut of rainbow colored setentrian at dead last subsisting on 107 points a point value similar to the point gain of two of the featured songs the small nature of the project which is not considered a full album has understandably led to its low popularity and one that is not unprecedented unknown flower mesmerizing journey the other small 0.5 hifu club cd is located at a similar 54th place while tragic for hifu club fans it cannot be said that these results were entirely unforeseen and with that, it's time for the questionnaire. Question 1, age, saw the population growing younger, with the 10 to 14 age group experiencing the biggest increase of almost 5%. The 15 to 19 group has also grown in size, while the other age groups have steadily lost their share of the voters. This is especially notable in the light of the 20th anniversary of Embodiment of Scarlet Devil. More than half of the voters are younger than the game itself. Despite the series growing in age, the Toho fandom has proven longevity through the presence of youth in the fandom. Question 2, gender, had the addition of a non-binary option this year, which debuted at a sizable 3.56%. Meanwhile, the male-female ratio is continuing to even out very gradually, with males dropping below 75% of voters for the first time in the history of the popularity poll. While this is still very imbalanced, though not unexpectedly so, Toho has come a long way from the 90% male population seen in previous polls. Question 3. Location features a continuation of the shift in population to outside of Japan seen in 2021. North America now has doubled the voters, with Europe almost achieving this speed as well. Large increases in rural voter numbers can also be seen in South America, Southeast Asia, and Oceania. While the East Asia category, which excludes Japan, has still increased in the raw numbers, it has lost some of its percentage advantage over the rest of the world. Japan still, of course, holds a super majority of the population, but the overseas Toho fandom is still growing and thriving. Question 4 on game completion has seen an overall increase in non-players, which likely corresponds to new fans who have not gotten a chance to play or one credit clear of the games yet. Unconnected Marketeer's 7th place position is justified in the questionnaire and has the second highest percentage of voters who have played the game within the third Windows generation, only narrowly behind Legacy of Lunatic Kingdom point device mode. While Embodiment and Scarlet Devil remains the most played game percentage wise, people playing it because of its 20th anniversary were outweighed by new fans who have not played it yet, as shown by the increase in the percentage of non-players for Toho 6 as well. Question 5 shows new revelations for the printworks. The downward shift of curiosities of Lotus Asia and popularity is matched with a small rise in non-owners of the series. Meanwhile, File Detective Satori has returned to the questionnaire after its hiatus. Both it and Lotus Eaters now have a new option for ownership in the poll, the Tenkoban or individual volumes. This is rather belated considering that both Lotus Eaters and Foul Detective Satori had their first volume released in August 2020. This option has swept the other ones to become the most common method of reading and comes with reductions in the percentages and raw votes of all the other methods of reading, which implies that people who owned the Tankoban volumes had previously just selected what they thought was the closest option. Though it's certainly unusual that the most popular method of owning the printworks has only just been let onto the questionnaire, it is good that it finally has arrived on the polls. Question 6 remains, as always, virtually unchanged despite the large influx of votes in total. In fact, in the eight years that this question has existed, the percentages of what people like about Toho has remained roughly the same. While there are a few very gradual changes, the Toho fandom is quite static in its preferences. Demographics may be increasingly changing, but Toho fans as a whole appear to like the same things no matter who they are. In question 7, time of joining, we see a huge influx in fans who joined between unconnected marketeers and the present day, with the category reaching 5.10%. This is the largest that the questionnaire's most 
most recent time category has been since 2008. Time categories prior to the release of Legacy of Lunatic Kingdom have mostly shrunk in percentage, while categories after Legacy of Lunatic Kingdom have all grown. The largest percentage of fans at 12.67% belongs to the time group between the releases of Hidden Star in 4 seasons and Wily Beast in Weakest Creature. This is perhaps the most direct sign of a living fandom with over half of the fandom joining after May 2014, the release of Impossible Spell Card. The old guard is now outpaced by the new, but as shown in Question 6's results, this may not bring in a significant change. Question 8's inquiry of discovery methods has seen the splitting off of YouTube from other video sites as its own separate category this year. YouTube took most of the other video sites votes with it. With 35.87% of the population, YouTube is now responsible for the largest portion of introductions to Toho. The other video sites category is left with a sizable 4.22%, which I would speculate is mostly from Bilibili. Nico Nico, on the other hand, has experienced a steady decline as has the magazine slash TV and doujinshi categories, paralleling the previously observed trend of a growing fandom outside of Japan. There was also another new category introduced, real life events other than large scale Toho events, an option selected by 17 total voters. This category doesn't seem to cover that many situations so its small size is understandable. Fan made mobile apps has slowly but steadily risen, although the category remains at a comparatively small 2.88%. With the end of Damaku Kagura a month after the poll, Lost Word is now the likeliest source of any increases in this category in the future, so much could be learned about Lost Word's influence from next year's poll numbers. Though there were a few adjustments to the question this year, there have been overall no large changes in introduction methods. Question 9 is event participation. Non-participation spiked in 2021 for fairly obvious reasons, but this high level of non-participation was roughly maintained in 2022. All participation categories have seen a significant reduction since 2021, despite the percentage of participants remaining roughly the same. This does seem to imply that people are doing less at conventions, however this is only speculation statistical oddities could very well be at hand here. And finally, question 10. Voting history has seen the same percentage of new voters as last year, although it should be kept in mind that newer voters are less likely to know about or fill out the questionnaire. However, this doesn't necessarily mean that those voters will be retained. In 2021, there were 5,563 first-time voters. In 2022, the 1-3 to time voters category only grew by 1,941 voters. A massive graduation to the 4 plus time voters category was not the case here as that category only grew by 198 voters in 2022. Despite this oddity in voter retention, 2022 was the first year that the 1 to 3 category increased in raw numbers since 2016 and it does have a higher percentage compared to last year. While the seemingly high lack of voter retention makes any conclusions unclear, what is clear is that there are a lot of new voters and thus a lot of new fans in the fandom. And that concludes our headlines for the 18th Toho Popularity Poll. Thank you for tuning in and- What was that? What do you mean extra stage? The Rivals poll was held in March 2023. Voters could choose any two characters to vote for as Rivals instead of picking from a predetermined list. Three votes for Rivals were allowed. This flexible nature allowed for a variety of combinations, some presumably very unusual, so the results only accounted for the 194 rivalries that exceeded 10 votes. While there is nothing to observe in terms of change, there are a few situations to consider. The top 10 have the most common canon rivalries. Clear connections are necessary for enough people to agree on the combination to get the pairing high enough on the polls. In first place is Reimu vs Marissa, a rivalry that can be said to have appeared in almost every single mainline game. In second place is the iconic Kaguya vs Moku. It kind of feels like they cheated because they're literally the poll logo but whatever. In third place is Aya vs Hatate, with Byakuren vs Miko in a very close fourth place. The Tengu rivalry's high position is quite interesting because Hatate has much less popularity than the other characters shown in this section of the poll. Fifth and sixth feature Reimu vs Sane and Romilia vs Flandre respectively, but in seventh is Yachi vs Saki, a really recent rivalry. Toho Sim Teen, despite all its lessened popularity this year, evidently did have quite an effect. In eighth is the first Marissa-related rivalry 
rivalry, Marissa versus Dallas. One may say that this is more of a ship than it is a rivalry and that wouldn't be wrong but a lot of rivalries also happen to be ships. The fandom has many different interpretations of relationships but all of these variations still contribute to the rise of a pairing, whether as lovers or as mortal enemies. And a popular pairing will naturally mean a higher ranking on the poll, even if the pair isn't only known as a rivalry. This is the highest Marissa related rivalry with Marissa versus Pachali at 16th and Pachali versus Alice at a still significant 29th. In 9th is Koichi versus Kokoro which evidently has remained quite heavily in the minds of people. Bringing up the rear in 10th place is the classic Kanako versus Suwako. While this may seem low it could be explained by the low popularity of Kanako although this did not stop Aya versus Hatate from rising. In 11th is Yukari versus Tenchi which stems from the interactions between Yukari and Tenchi in Scarlet Weather Raspity. This evidently has not completely died out in the fandom. In 12th is another recent rivalry, Flandre vs Yuma. Its high popularity may be because of Flandre's own popularity, but it may also indicate greater influence from Sunken Fossil World than its impact on characters may imply. The recency factor may also play an effect. In 13th is Notori vs Takane. The Kappa vs Yamawara rivalry has been recently built upon with 100 Black Market, providing a simple explanation for the high ranking. In 14th is Junko vs Chango, and the only thing that can be said about this is that it's the highest that Chang'e is ever going to get on the polls. The other 180 rivalries can roughly be broken down into several broad categories. There are a lot of mirror character rivalries between characters that have similar roles. For example, Sakia vs Yomu at 15th is a rivalry between two servants, Flandre vs Koichi at 19th is a rivalry between two younger sisters, and so on. There are a few rivalries that also have major non-antagonistic interactions. Seiran vs Ringo at 17th have competing Dango stands but were also comrades during the events of Legacy of Lunatic Kingdom. Shizuha vs Minoriko at 48th are rivals over Faith but their sistership is emphasized in some works as well. And finally, there are the rivalries that are kind of just normal pairings or ships. In 31st and 34th are Sakia vs Remelia and Yuyuko vs Yomu respectively, and in 47th is Kane vs Moku. Perhaps the most interesting case is Ranko vs Maribel in 33rd. Ice Fairy perhaps works this best as rivals in who loves the other more. Now, that isn't to say that all ships or pairings have been voted for as rivalries. Kaguya vs Eren is at 92nd, although antagonists rivalries are higher on the polls, the polling instructions explicitly acknowledge the fluidity of what defines a rivalry, hence the flexibility and options. It's notable that the number one pairing in the January 2021 poll was also Reimu and Marissa. The relationships between characters, especially in the fandom, is quite nebulous and not cut and dry at all. Although much of the interest in popularity polls comes from observing chains, there are still a few insights to be garnered from this extra poll. But this is where our coverage of it ends. The 18th annual Toho popularity poll has been quite revelatory for the status of many Toho works. Embodiment of Scarlet Devil's Reign has only been reinforced for its 20th anniversary with a flandre sweep across all categories. Toho 17 and 18 characters are settling into what is likely to be more permanent positions, with Kutaka and Tsukasa having the best grip on their popularity. Sunken Fossil World and 100th Black Market, while not exceptionally impactful, still left a decently sized impression on the fandom. Rainbow Colored Setentrian has been banished to irrelevance. Growth continues in the fandom, especially outside of Japan. And finally, a ship and a rivalry is shown to be almost two sides of the same coin. As the Toho fandom changes, keep your eyes peeled. You never know what might have an impact on the polls. Special thanks to Maribel Hearn for his translation of the 18th Toho popularity poll. Next up, The Secret Life of Tsuchinoko. What are these seemingly harmless yokai really capable of? Stay tuned on Lotus News Network.